this is a pattern that I designed for catching grass carp. Um, it works well. The secret is getting it in front of the grass carp uh, without spooking them. Um, I don't know if they think this is a piece of grass. I, I don't know, but it works. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna be using chartreuse number six flat waxed Danville thread. Just a pair of sharp scissors, um, some sh forest green uh, body hair. You can mix this up. We're gonna be using some chartreuse foam and a size 10 hook. And you'll also need a stacker and some super glue. So we're gonna start by just behind the eye. Advance the thread all the way back. Cut off your tag end. Get a decent thread base down because that's what you're gonna glue to. Stop just before the bend of the hook starts. All right, here's our, I think this is two millimeter foam. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and cut it at the width we want. Almost a centimeter in width. The length, go ahead and leave it about two times as long as your hook. What we'll do here, just a quick tip, we're gonna actually take the hook out of the vise. All right, the length of the tail is going to be determined by the gap of the hook. So we're simply going to put the foam like so. You want to be as centered as possible. Pierce the foam like that, all right, and then turn it around and put it back on the vise. Okay, get the foam out of the way, advance your thread back. And go ahead and make one segment, the very back segment here. Loose wraps at first, follow them by tight wraps. I usually go two, maybe three on this one. All right, for now. This is a neat little trick. I'll take my scissors and I'll kind of perforate this right down the middle of the back. You don't really have to cut it, but perforate it. This is where your glue comes in handy. You can use any glue. I like a fast setting glue. This is just some cheap stuff you can get at Walmart. Less is more. You want to put a dab of that right, right there where we tied our thread around. And what we'll do here is we're just going to pinch the back, making it into sort of a, you know, a natural tube shape instead of squared off rear end. Let that dry a little bit. Now, <clears throat> this is just to segment the back. Usually you can put two or three in here. I'm just going to put one. You'll go on the top like so. You'll have to kind of pull the tail end up with your fingers. Come around. Tighten. Okay. Do that twice. The glue will help hold this in. Now when you come back and bench your thread back forward, you want to make sure you're on top. All right, now we're back to where we started. This is where that thread base is going to play a significant role. We want to put just a fine little bead of super glue on there. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to as we advance our thread forward, we're doing it on top. You can segment this as much as you want. I don't know how necessary it is. I, I do, I go two, like so. And then this last segment will be the head. What I like to do now is I like to take my scissors and I like to pierce right where the eye is on the phone because what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that foam through that eye. <clears throat> All right, now you're gonna take your deer hair, 
going to cut off a good little clump nothing fancy try to get all the fibers out of it this is going to help the stacking process I just use my scissors you can use a bobkin or anything I like to clean these up a little bit now I'll throw it in my stacker just to even the tips out a little bit Determine your length. I usually go right up to the tail. So we'll place it in behind there. A couple loose wraps, tighten, and I like to catch those fibers in between like so. And while still holding on to this, what we'll do here is we're gonna cut this, all this nasty stuff away. I don't know how much making it neat matters, but all right. Now we're gonna take one more drop of super glue and we're gonna put it right there. We're gonna pull this head through. May have to help it a little bit. Like so. And be careful because you've got super glue touching your your wing case here, so. What I like to do, pull that back, a couple wraps like so. Trim that up nice and neat. What we'll do now on the tail, you can do this before I kind of let this out, it's optional. I like to go ahead and I like to make a cut in here, just tapering that a little bit. Makes it look a little more natural. And the last step is just tying in the legs. Nothing fancy here. Catch those a couple times. And just whip finish. And that's the completed fly. <clears throat> As you can see underneath, it's segmented. Um, it's not the most realistic grasshopper pattern out there, um, but I'll tell you, I've caught a lot of trout on this fly. Um, obviously, you catch a lot of panfish, and most importantly, grass carp love this fly. I do not know why, um, but like I said, I hope, uh, I hope it helps. Get out there and try to catch some of these fish. They're an awesome sport fish, um, and it's a great alternative to uh, boat fishing. So. Enjoy.